Yeah, hello everyone, and welcome to the next, uh, the third session of AZ400, uh, that is define and implement continuous integration. Uh, that is, this is going to be our first session uh, for this module. Uh, we have divided this module into two parts. So today we are going to have first part of it, and then the next session that we are having, that we have scheduled on 25th of December. Uh, uh, that will be 26th of December. That, that will uh, have the uh, next uh, part of this particular module. So let's go ahead and start this thing. Before we start, uh, we just want to acknowledge the people behind this these sessions that we are having. Uh, uh, Neeraj, who is behind Azure Talk community, uh, you know, who has been helping us to uh, kind of uh, conduct all these sessions helping us with the with the resources helping us with the with the knowledge and helping us you know okay, bringing all us all of us together to bring this particular concept in action so neeraj uh, is our founder of azure talk and azure easy community uh, after that we have ram murthy who is based out of bangalore uh, he is also an active community member and he works behind the scene to help us to arrange all the content and everything that we are trying to uh, you know, present here. So maybe you are uh, seeing these two presenters or three presenters, but behind the scene, uh, there are a couple of people who are helping each other to bring the, you know, the quality content that we are able to present here. Uh, then this me, I mean, this is me, Ashish. Uh, I am based out of Bangalore. I am DevOps architect and I will be taking first part of session uh, today. And uh, then we have Vipin, who is a Microsoft certified trainer and a freelance consultant for Azure. And he, he has conducted uh, our training on Azure Administrator and Fundamental previously, and he is working behind the scene uh, to arrange all these sessions uh, to help us with the content and everything. So you know we would like to thank him as well now we have rahul uh, who is our network architect and he helps us uh, all the you know uh, wherever we need some sessions uh, about networking and uh, or cloud in general so we uh, rahul has conducted few sessions in past and then he is helping us uh, behind the scene to uh, bring all the content uh, we have kritika uh, uh, who is also working behind the scene to help us with the content, with the uh, with with uh, uh, sharing the sharing the information in social media and everywhere. So Kritika is also one of one part of our Azure Talk team who is taking care of all the things who, which are working behind the scene. And then Nitanshu, who is uh, going to take the demo session today, and also he is part of the core uh, core core team member who uh, you know who is who is helping all the team members, all the presenters, and all the speakers to bring the best out of that best content. Uh, so let's uh, go ahead and just uh, talk about the today's speakers. That is again, that is me, Ashish. Uh, we have already discussed about. I am Microsoft certified trainer and also a DevOps architect currently working and and currently based out of Bangalore, India. Then we have Nitanshu, who is based out of Delhi uh, and also a uh, uh, cloud consultant as well as Microsoft certified professional. So we are going to, you know, I, I am going to take uh, first part of the session. That is uh, the theory or the conceptual discussion. Then Nitanshu will drive us to, uh, uh, through the through the practical or the from the demo point of view. So. Let's go ahead and before we start the session, we just want to, uh, you know, just sh uh, share a uh, few information about Azure free exam vouchers that we are going to give uh, to few participants. So for that, you need to participate in the quiz, which will be there in the last of the session. So we'll be having a quiz just like previously we had. And today uh, during, uh, you, know, uh, you know, before we will have the quiz for today, we will also announce the winner of the previous session quiz. And those winners will be uh, getting the Azure uh, exam vouchers free as Azure exam vouchers and using that they can uh, they can appear for any exam uh, free of cost. Uh, six participants will be selecting and then uh, there, was, there is one condition that 
you should be participating in the quiz as well as you should be registered on Eventbrite page that we have for the session. So we will be matching those people who are also registered there and then we will be picking few of the people uh, who will be getting Azure passes. Uh, winner will be announced for today's session. Winners will be announced in the next session and today we are going to announce the previous session winners. So that is the format of this quiz and that is how we are going to uh, give away the vouchers. Now let's go ahead and be, uh, understand this DevOps exam AZ 400. Uh, for appearing for you know uh, be, uh, to get the certification uh, you can go ahead and take the exam that we are for which we are having the training that is designing and implementing Microsoft DevOps solutions, which is exam 400. But to get a certification badge, you have to have one of the prerequisite. Uh, either you should be a certified administrator. That is the first exam AZ 104 or you should have a, a developer associate uh, certification which is AZ204. If you combine any one of them and with the AZ400, then you get the certification badge which is Microsoft Certified DevOps Engineer. So we are going to have the AZ400 discussion but and you can appear for the exam, but just for the um, uh, from the uh, certification or from the badge point of view, you should also have to have uh, one of the exam cleared that is AZ104 or AZ204 so that you can combine this all and then you can be eligible for the uh, DevOps certificate. Uh, we have conducted AZ104 training, so if you go through our uh, YouTube channel and uh, we, we have uh, hosted the session, I mean hosted the session and then recorded the session and that is there on the YouTube channel. So you can go there and you can watch all the sessions and a uh, couple of people, many people have actually uh, just uh, enrolled for exam and passed those exams after watching our sessions and they have kind of acknowledged that particular information. So you can go there and watch the training and then you can also appear for one of the prerequisite. Now <clears throat> let's go ahead and discuss about some prerequisite here. So, uh, so uh, the agenda of the this this uh, you know uh, this exam AZ 400. In this exam, uh, you know these are the modules that you need to cover from the uh, from the uh, you know the topic point of view. Uh, the first topic is facilitate communication and collaboration. The second is manage uh, source control. So these are the two modules that we have already covered in our previous session and we have also uh, you know shared the uh, session recording on our YouTube channel so you can go there and watch your watch the recordings if you have not uh, you know watched our previous session. After that, this is the uh, you know today's agenda that is define and implement continuous integration. This particular uh, topic contains uh, you know one of the largest uh, weightage of your exam that is 20 to 25 percent. So that is the reason we 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 tried to uh, you know uh, uh, divided this session into two parts. And the first part we are going to have today, and the second part we will be having in the next session. So. And then uh, in upcoming uh, sessions, we will be covering the other modules that are part of this exam. Now <clears throat> let's come back to the agenda of today's uh, session. The first thing that we are going to discuss about is design build automation. So we will talk about how do you design your <coughs> automation. I mean, what exactly the build is and how you can design the automation around it and how why why you should do that. Then we will be talking about the build strategy. So what are the various aspects or practices or the or the or the design patterns that you should be aware while you are implementing the build strategy in your organization? Then we'll be talking about the maintaining that build strategy. So implementing build strategy is one thing and then how you can make sure that those things are working properly. They are maintained properly. They uh, you know the people are updating it as and when their things are changing. So that is the thing we are going to discuss about and then in the last uh, part we will be talking about how do you design a process so that you can standardize those implementation, those maintenance aspect across the organization. So what are the things are there? What are the tools are there? What are the best practices are there? 
so that whenever you do some uh, proof of concept for for implementing a build strategy or, or or looking into the maintenance part of it then how you can standardize it within your organization so <clears throat> let's go ahead and discuss about the first section which is design build automation now when you design your build automation and uh, actually when you uh, you know when you want to uh, run a build in your organization there are certain things that you need to look at the first thing you will be uh, you know looking into is code analysis part of it so when you are running a build you want to make sure that whatever the known uh, you know coding standards are whatever the you know the known security vulnerability may be happening because one type of platform that you are using to develop your application uh, what are the best practices from the ecosystem so suppose you are working on uh, you know .NET application or you are working on from from the infrastructure point of view if you are working on uh, something called uh, ARM template. So, what are the basic things you should be, uh, you know, cons consider when you are developing your code? How do you scan your code? How do you look at this uh, from the best practices point of view? How do you look at it from the security vulnerability point of view? So, all those things will be part of your code analysis part. So, you, when you are building your build, uh, you know, when you are defining your build, then this is the first thing you will be looking at. Then the next thing that you will be looking at is dependency scanning. So when you are building an application, probably a .NET application, uh, uh, you know, then you would be looking at what are the packages. For example, in .NET, there are packages, there are Nougat packages that might be part of your project, which might be coming from open source world or which might be coming from internal organizations. So you know what are the various things are there and what are the dependencies are there and if at all those dependencies are secure enough if at all those dependencies are maintained enough that can be allowed in a build of your application that is coming from uh, you know that is for your organizational uh, you know application development platform so suppose you are developing an application in within your organization and developer has used a dependency a uh, nugget package which is open source and suppose that particular open source package is not well maintained right and if at all you are not looking at that particular aspect then what will happen developer will be able to you know implement those features which are you know uh, which are uh, which which are being asked to him to implement using those dependencies which using those open source packages but uh, if that package is not maintained properly all right, and you cannot control that aspect because that is coming from outside of your organization. Then what will happen? Whatever the vulnerability will be happening on that package level will be part of your application as well because your application is a dependent on that particular package. So that's how that is the reason you should be looking at dependency scanning, how you can you know look at this. There are various tools. Uh, uh, there are various static code analyzers or there are various uh, you know uh, um, scanning tool which can help you to scan the dependencies then the third thing which is very important from the build point of view is running your test whether it is um, you know we will be talking about a stats testing strategy in 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 one of the upcoming slide but what what do we mean by test is it can be any kind of test it can be unit test it can be you know integration test it can be any any kind of test that must be happening while building your application so those tests if they are not passing those tests which are not passing and because of that there might be a breaking change into the application then you should be catching those particular thing using testing strategy. So we will be looking at it that you know what are the tests you can automate, what are the tests you can, you might not be able to automate and you might not be able to put it into the build pipeline. Uh, you might have to look at some other way of you know catching those uh, you know problems uh, using testing strategy. So we'll be looking looking into it. But when you are you know looking at your build, you should be looking at what kind of things that can be tested so that if at all things are passing from the build, uh, they should be uh, sure enough will be running on your system. Now the thing, uh, you know, the next thing is compile. Definitely this is what you do normally on your local computer as well. 
So when you are running a .NET application, when you're running a Java application, when any any app, any application which is a compiled you know app you know which is developed based on a compiled uh, platform that is .NET, Java, and all those things, then you must be compiling them so that you get a valid DLL file or a valid .exe file or a valid .msi file or whatever format it may have, and then you can you know go ahead and give it to the deployment team and they can deploy it on the server on the desktop or wherever it it is supposed to be deployed so compilation is the one uh, is another thing that you will be doing now before you do the compilation you also look at the configuration changes so you know <coughs> if at all suppose your developer has moved the code and then developer you might be giving a different environment to the developer to do the development uh, for example you might be giving a different uh, uh, connection string to the developer while he is developing and you might want to change that connection string during the build process so that when the package which is coming out of that particular build process does not have that particular uh, development environment linkage rather it should have production uh, you know uh, a production or qa or whatever the next environment is that environment information is there so that kind of configuration changes or maybe suppose you are deploy you know you are building an application and that might have a dependency with one of the infrastructure property suppose you are deploying you know an application which needs a particular uh, features to be enabled on the infrastructure side then in that case you might want to change that particular configuration before you build your application so that when the next step of testing happens that particular change is in place and that way you will be able to you will be able to make sure that you know things are there all those configuration are corrected and changed uh, be, you know before passing the build pipeline so this is you know this is the uh, these are the you know one of the major uh, sections or major points that you will be looking at when you are building your whenever you are kind of designing your build pipeline or defining your build pipeline these are the major things that you will be looking at uh, when you are you know defining your build pipeline uh, normally what happens is that you have you know code changes you have a version control system that is git or, or any other version control but git is one of the most popular Git version control system these days. So suppose you have a Git version control system, you will be having a code review process. Uh, you know, we have talked about code review and all in, in one of our previous session where we have discussed about managing source control system. So uh, if you are not familiar with this particular aspect, I will definitely recommend you to go there in this previous session and you know look at what are the various ways you can implement your code review process. Whenever there is a change, you will be having a code review process where peers will be uh, reviewing the code and they will be looking at it uh, in a very uh, 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 in a very uh, collaborative manner that you know the uh, what are the things which are as per the standard what are the things that can be reviewed further and can be changed and all once the review is done then you will be having a build pipeline now in the build pipeline itself we have discussed one of the thing that you do is code analysis so your code analysis will be happening and based on that code analysis you will be having a reporting kind of thing that okay these are things happening these are the you know uh, these are the tests are passing these are the tests failing these these are the dependencies uh, you, know, you know these are the package dependencies these are the uh, you know open source package dependency these are the internal package dependency all of these and based on that you define a quality gate right so you know based on that code analysis you define that okay if there is some test which are fall uh, you know failing and they fall into that particular category all right i am not going to pass that as a build Th that can be there or it might be that there might be some low priority testing or low priority you know code vulnerability that you might want to skip for you know for your build uh, based on your organizational standard based on your uh, understanding of that particular level of risk or that particular level of uh, you know technical depth that might happen if at all you will allow the, those those uh, low priority things 
you based on that you define a quality gate and that's what we call quality gate based on that you know what can go what cannot go what are the priority what are those things you can define all those things and if at all that quality gate is passing then you get something called artifact artifact is something which comes out of your build infrastructure when you do the uh, you know the build definition uh, we will be talking about what are the various things you do in the build definition but when you do all those things out of it when it comes it comes a exe file uh, you know a jpeg uh, uh, sorry the zip file or a var file or whatever i mean uh, a zar file whatever it may be it, it, it entirely depends the type of the you know the stack that you are building the type of application you are interacting with but end of the day when you know your build passes it generates a package or something that can be deployed that something that particular you know thing is called artifact it can be a zip file it can be a exe file it can be a msi file it can be a you know it can be any file that can be given to the other system either it is manual or automated that okay boss things are fine tests are done everything is done build is passing you can go ahead and deploy it that's how your quality gate defines whether this should go out or whether this should not go out if at all your quality gate is not passing that your artifact will not be generated then and there you will stop it and then your code it will go back to your code developer and then they will have to review that you know if at all they should be allowing that particular quality gate or they should be making those corrections so that quality gate can pass and then generate the artifact now the next thing we will be talking you know once you you have this uh, quality you know inspection and you might be having certain things which you can automate and certain things you might have to do manually now based on that particular thing we ha we have something called testing strategy and in this strategy we divide all these types of test into four quadrant as you can see on the image we have a rectangle there are four quadrants are there now in this four quadrant on each edge we have something called you know let me just just give me a moment okay so on on these quadrants uh, you have something called uh, these uh, you know uh, these technology facing these are supporting the team these are critic the product and these are the business facing so based on the facing side they can be either technology facing or they can be uh, you know on the uh, business facing what do we mean by that is that you know the ty types of test you are writing they can be either uh, biased towards technology it is more of like writing script uh, running the script getting the details from the script get, uh, script result you know, finding out whether this was passed based on the code based on the uh, you know http response code or based on a particular type of uh, output that it generates those are called technology facing or it might be business facing business fa uh, facing where you will be not concerned when, when you are running those types of test you might not be concerned about technological more concerned about the technological aspect but it will be more on the functional aspect what business is looking at you know you might be uh, looking at the functional aspect of it similarly there might be few tests which are supporting the team so what do you mean by that is they are telling that these are the tests which can improve your product which can which are not breaking changes i mean which are not breaking test but they are kind of they are kind of a uh, additional feedback about about your product but there can be certain test which can be critical to your product where you know the feedback from the testing will come as a as a negative point of your product and you have to improve on it so based on these four sides we have these four quadrant and the first thing that falls into the first quadrant which is there you know that is called unit test and component test they are mostly technological test you know you write unit test in a in a particular programming language like c sharp or, or i mean based on your programming stack they are like you know a programs which runs and then finds out you know things are happening properly those units are executed properly the the information is coming properly and all those things so unit test 
similarly you have component test those components are you know the, those things run a, a script a function or something which which can be more on the technological side that can be automated so based on type of these tests we you know we have enough uh, 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 technology for various platforms which can help you to automate these kind of tests but if you if you go towards quad, quadrant 2 these are the functional test story test prototype test or simulations where it is not you know entirely based on some script it is more on the side of you know looking at the color looking at the functional out point uh, uh, functional um, side of it uh, you might be looking at the graphical user interface you might be looking at whether if i if i click on certain button if it gives up a you know desired result or not if the functions are properly you know if they are giving the results in a proper format if they are you know all those kind of test they which are falling into these types of test those test either can be automated or manual so they you know based on the types if you know as you may heard that there are certain graphical user interface tools which can help you to do the uh, the functional test or the graphical user uh, interface test using automated tool but there are certain types of test which are functional in nature and might not be able to automate them so these types of test you have to design your strategy in a way that you have to compromise in some places where they cannot be automated hence they cannot be put into your build cycle and that's why we you have to put a particular qa team or a qa stage where certain manual you know manual efforts will be required so that they can do the enough testing and then they can only promote the build to the next phase now the quad one three can have exploratory test scenario usability test and all these are these tests are also business facing all right but mostly manual it is like you know they usability testing so you might or user acceptance testing these tests are mostly you know based on the user uh, feedback based on the based on the person to person and in, uh, interpretation of the features and all those things where business comes into picture and tells that okay what do we mean by that feature and what i mean how our people are going to use that particular feature and based on that manual inspection we might be able to tell that whether these things are you know working as expected or not similarly in the in the later uh, you know the last quadrant that has performance load security test ilt test these test things as you may as you can see these testing can be you know based on the tooling side you can have a, a load testing tool you can have a performance testing tool and then you can um, you know implement those tools and can be automated can have the script or can have the tool do that work for you so the, based on these understanding you have to define your testing strategy and based on that particular testing strategy you will be looking at your build to incorporate certain things as a automated way of doing things and you may have to look at certain things where you have to do some manual stuff till the time it does not fall into other quadrant where things can be automated so this is the you know testing strategy you can think of when you are implementing your build and when you are looking into what are the things i can put what are the testing what are the test i can put into the build and what are the test which might not be which which falls into a category where you know they they fall into business facing area where manual things will be required now after understanding all these things you will be looking at you know implementing your build strategy so you know that okay these are the things we automate these are the things we cannot automate these are the things we are going to check these are the things we are going to change during the build uh, you know build build these are the things that we are going to run uh, you know uh, the quality gate against uh, so all those things are you know you have verified okay these are the configuration changes you are going to do in terms of infrastructure these are the configuration changes you are going to do in terms of application code after understanding everything then you look at the you know the how do you implement those things uh, uh, using some tools using some uh, you know the process which are there based on the tooling or based on the uh, requirement that you have 
the first thing that you will be looking at having a build infrastructure of course when when you are looking at building your you know when you want to automate your build you have to look at certain tools which are available in the market that can help you to do that particular build you know build automated build ci pipeline and all those things so the first thing you will be looking at build infrastructure and the first thing that you will be hitting towards is what tool you can pick so there are various tools we have listed down few few of the most uh, you know most important or most popular one uh, if you talk about az400 uh, questions point of view these are the three major tools where uh, questions might be coming around these tools uh, azure pipeline which is coming from the microsoft azure devops services github actions which is again a part of github uh, solution which is again now acquired by microsoft so somehow it is again coming from microsoft itself then there is a third tool which is quite popular that is jenkins which is an open source tool that also helps you to build your infrastructure in terms of build pipeline now when you look at these tools and there are so many other tools uh, which are there and you might have to look at those tools as well uh, based on your need based on your organizational need based on your organization approach towards a vendor so all those things will come into picture but when you are looking at various tools to implement the build infrastructure the first thing which will hit you is cost so what is the cost for that application or uh, for that particular uh, you know of that particular tool so if we are talking about azure pipelines so azure pipelines is free for five users so and 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 of course it is free for open source project you have certain uh, certain number of 1800 minutes of free uh you know per month build minutes uh, you have hosted agent and all those things you know so azure pipelines is one of the thing that can help you to start without investing anything similarly github actions is also a similar options you have where you can start working on github uh, to build your ci pipeline and if you are running a open source project then it is almost free for you and if you are running a on prem solution if you are running a, you know if you need it for your organizational need of course there will be a pricing that you have to go through uh, based on the github documentation but of course it also has a free tier similar to azure pipeline similar to limit, a limitation will also have similar to what you have with azure pipeline now we, when we talk about open source software that is jenkin uh, jenkin comes free as a download so you can download it but the the thing is jenkins is just a software you do not have the infrastructure unlike azure pipelines or github actions so github actions or azure pipelines are software as a so service solutions they are hosted by microsoft or github and then they are providing you a basic level of you know uh, services free of cost in case of jenkins you have to implement implement your server infrastructure to host this application so from the application point of view it comes free but you have to have the infrastructure so that you can install this one you can configure that particular infrastructure and then only you can use it there are certain vendors who are giving jenkins as a free uh, solution on their infrastructure for a certain limit uh, but but in a, in an all if you are talking about enterprise you have to kind of download it and you have to set up your infrastructure so in that sense if you are just starting up azure pipelines and github actions are making sense and that's how the exam also kind of uh, uh, expects but uh, you know to to know uh, azure pipelines and github but at the same time uh, you know jenkins is one of the most popular tools uh, tool uh, for ci implementation in open source world so you must be looking at this one uh, from the point of view where organizations do have this particular tool now when you are talking about azure pipelines github actions or jenkins uh, except jenkins you will have the option of hosted agent now what is hosted agent so hosted agents are when you are running your build pipeline it must be running on a particular uh, you know on a server on a compute on a on a computer on a virtual machine now in case of azure pipelines and in uh, you know azure pipelines and github actions microsoft or github provides you a certain level of compute free of cost and after that they will have a tier where they will they will 
provide you that same uh, you know virtual machine computer whatever you may call uh, with a with a costing mechanism so they will have a free limit so in case of azure pipeline it is 1800 minutes so if you are running your build uh, you know you can run 1800 minutes of build every month free of cost for any project um, private public whatever but in case of you know azure pipeline if you are running a private project uh, public uh, you know public project or open source project you will have you know unlimited time not 1800 limit so you for open source project azure pipeline can help you with you know running builds for unlimited time but if you're running it on premise uh, you know in, in an organization for a private project then you will have a limit of 1800 minutes after 1800 minutes you will have to pay a certain amount to microsoft if at all you want to use their hosted agent that's what that's why the name is hosted agent where it is hosted in microsoft infrastructure and primarily it is hosted in azure which is microsoft cloud similarly github is also providing similar kind of already hosted infrastructure where if you configure your ci pipeline in github actions then it will run in a hosted infrastructure and they will not charge you for a certain limit after that they will be charging you so there is a pay payment you know you have you have to figure out how many things are there how many you know builds i am going to run is it going to cross 1800 minutes of you know limitation that you have on azure pipeline similar kind of thing if at all you have a you know consideration where you don't want to buy their server i mean you don't want to go with the hosted agent uh, either because of you know your organizational security aspect where you know they can they cannot run the build on a on a server where they do not have control then in that case you have something called private agent, private agent where you can have your server in your on premises system or in a virtual network in a cloud so you can have anywhere it can be a virtual machine in a cloud it can be virtual machine on premises anywhere then you can connect that particular uh, you know private agent with azure pipelines or github or or jenkins and then you whenever you are running the build using one of the tool azure pipelines or any any one of the ci pipeline the build will run on that private agent so the execution will happening on your own server so you can see what are the you know what are the artifacts are getting generated what are the log files what are the things are happening all those things will be available to you and even if your organization permits you can go there and look into the agent and troubleshoot things and all which is not available in hosted agent hosted agent microsoft giving you uh, you know a compute to run your build but they will not give you rdp access and all those things which might be needed in some scenarios where you want to configure your private you know your agent with certain toolings with certain packages with certain run time so that your build can progress properly so this is the reason you might want to look at the private agent and you will have to plan your private agent infrastructure properly. So, you know, based on the, uh, the runtime that you need, based on the packages that you need and all those things. Now, once you have all these things consideration in, uh, you know, in your in your planning that, OK, these are the things that, uh, you know, I will need. Then you go through the uh, implementing your uh, build pipeline. Now, when you implement your build pipeline, the first thing which comes into picture is CI triggers. Now, CI trigger is also known as continuous integration triggers. So what do we mean by here is that normally you have your, you know, version control uh, which is hosting your codes and you know whenever something changes those changes can trigger uh you know uh, can trigger a build now that trigger that you can define in based on tool and during our demonstration we will be we will be looking at uh, azure devops where do you define that trigger so these triggers what do you mean by these triggers is that based on changes in the code in a branch, in a schedule, on a path, on a tag, it can start a build. So if it is happening on a branch, then only it will start a build. You can define that. So suppose in a in a version control, you normally have various branches like master, develop, you know, release, and all those things. Now, if at all you think that I only want to start the build when there is a change in master branch. All right, develop. I don't want to run the build uh, any other branch. I don't want to run the build. Just a hypothetical example. 
in, in 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 real scenario you might want to run the build for each branch each main branch develop release or master you might want to, you might not want to run a build on a feature branch but you might want to run a build on every uh, main branch so you can define that or you can define a schedule so you know your developers are working all the day and then because your builds are complex you know this is going to run for one one hour or 30 minutes or you know it is going to take a lot of compute or it is going to run uh, you know it is going to need a lot of resources then you might not want to run on each change you might want to let the developer do all those changes into that branch and you might want to run the build on a particular schedule only right every day in the night every day in the you know uh, 10 pm in the night where you know no developer is working or maybe every day in the uh, starting the you know work of the day like morning early morning uh, that kind of a schedule you can define similarly you can define path as well so you know in your version control system you might be having various you know folders within you know each folder you might be having certain you know certain code or certain files which might not be you know requiring a build uh, right so for example web.config file changes they do not require a build right i mean web.config file uh, you know does not require a file, you know build at all it is uh, you know not a compile code similarly in the same repository you might be having some other files which might not be part of the application build process and you might not want to run the build or you might be having a single folder which is containing the application code and other folders are containing documents or other things so you might want to configure your ci pipeline to trigger the build only when there is a change in a particular path so that particular thing can be done similarly uh, in version control system you have tags so you know when you define your build with a particular tag then only you know uh, uh, define your changes with a particular tag then only it should start that build that can be also done so there are various trigger filters that you can define and based on that you can run your build now as we have discussed there are various things you might be running in the build based on all those things that you are you know in cooperating in your uh, build definition there will be a you know a success and after success you will be getting a answer. this is you know this is what going to happen on each change based on a branch based on a schedule based on a path or based on a tax now when you define your build we have already discussed that you know you might be having uh, the build cycle now what do you mean by this build pipeline when when you define your build pipeline like similarly you have a trigger now after trigger in a build you can have various things running one of the thing that you will be doing as we have discussed testing you might be incorporating all those things which are to be included as an automated testing feature like unit testing integration testing you know api testing all those kind of things whatever you think can be integrated to validate if this build is you know functional uh, functional if this is going to really you know if, if this is going to build a thing which is which will be able to run on a server or on a on a you know or, or is usable you might want to look at the package dependency we have also discussed about that you know uh, in your application you might be having various packages involved and then when you are defining your build definition you will be looking into restoring those packages for example in dotnet you will be restoring the nuclear packages uh, you know in other development ecosystem you will be restoring the packages based on that particular development ecosystem so you want to you know kind of uh, look at all those package dependency you want to scan those packages if at all there are certain open source packages there are certain uh, you know packages with vulnerability based on the tier of vulnerability you might want to define your quality gate we have already discussed what is quality gate so all those things you will be defining you might be changing the configuration we have again discussed about that you might be changing the con connection string you might be changing the you know the where some some variables you might be changing some environment variable you might be picking some variables from uh, you know some other ecosystem you might be taking a secret information like password from the azure key vault so all those things you will be making changes into the configuration changes and then in the end you will be compiling so when you are done with all the types of tests you that you are supposed to run 
done when you are done with all the types of uh, you know configuration changes that's supposed to happen as a part of that build when everything is done then you might be running your compile that is going to generate your build artifact and that is how you define your build definition we will be looking into the build definition during our uh, demonstration uh, lab part where nitanshu will be showing you how a build looks like in azure you know azure pipelines but these are the major things that you will be taking care now based on the platform based on the software that you are building there might be certain other things you might want to do you know uh, based on uh, those needs in your build cycle itself but these are the high level things these are the high level sections that are applicable in majority build definitions that you want to run in uh, in your build pipelines now when you look at the configuration we have discussed about configuration changes and that happens uh, you know quite a lot time when you are looking at configuration changes so what are the things that you might be looking at you might be looking at the db connection string so you you have an application uh, that application has a database connection uh, which supposed to happen to run, to make uh, this application run so that particular database connection from when it is you know committed by developer that might have a, a developer specific database connection string you might want to replace that with the actual database connection string or you might want to remove it and then take care of that particular connection on the deployment server itself so whatever you want to do you want to make those changes because when you do the build cycle and whatever comes out of that build cycle you should not you know make changes into code post that so once you have the artifact those artifacts should be deployed as it is you should not be making any code changes into an artifact so if you are not replacing your connection string and if you are giving if you are not replacing your connection string during the build and suppose you have generated your artifacts with a connection string which is a developer developer connection string and then your deployment team is changing that connection string that the uh, from the artifact that you have given which is coming out of your build pipeline which is not a correct best practices which is not a right way of dealing with artifact so if at all there is something which is being changed by deployment team in the code then that has to be communicated back to the 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 person who is building the pipeline build a pipeline and who uh, that person should be should should take care of those changes similar to that you know this kind of uh, scenario can happen for application variable this can be system variable this can be secrets like password like connection string like other information api uh, you know uh, secrets or or certain uh, you know certain values that are supposed to be there so that the application can talk to a third party system those things you need to take care during the, the build build uh, pipeline itself so that you can change those things during that time then you will look at infrastructure configuration as well so when you are building your application and if at all you are also building infrastructure part of that right so suppose you have a web application you are developing your application and then deploying the web application into azure web app all right now the azure web app deployment also supposed to happen through the pipeline process like ci pipeline now if at all your application has some changes which is going to expect some changes on the infrastructure side or maybe it's supposed to deploy the infrastructure as well as a part of that particular deployment so you should make sure that if at all some configuration changes are required or if at all certain infrastructure supposed to be ready before this build can go and hit that uh, hit for hit that particular infrastructure for deployment you might want to do that during your build you know uh, looking uh, you know during your build definition or maybe just after build you can run another build which is going to make changes into the infrastructure or deploy the infrastructure that particular option is also available we will be talking about where it is in the azure pipelines so there is an option where you can trigger a build just after one build so you can trigger a build just after once once your uh, you know application build is configured uh, you know successful then you can 
trigger another build or once your infrastructure build is uh, you know successful then you can trigger another build which is going to build the application for that particular infrastructure or vice versa based on your requirement but this is also one of the thing that you should uh, understand from the build definition point of view now comes the next part which is maintaining the build so once you have the build infrastructure with all these things in picture right you have your infrastructure pipeline you have your application pipeline you have taken care of your application code rip you know uh, code dependency you have taken care of all those things then you might want to maintain that particular thing uh, uh, so that whatever you have done whatever build infrastructure you have built whatever the tool selections you have made whatever the testing strategy you have picked you have to maintain that as well so that tomorrow uh, you know things can improve over period right devops is all about improvement so today your build is taking like 30 minutes or 40 minutes of time it is possible to reduce it further to 20 minutes and then further to 10 minutes and you know uh, or maybe some other task needs to be added so that things can work with the uh, with the features that are being uh, included suppose now developers is, uh, developers are using new packages which may have a dependency on the infrastructure or now developer is using a a, a new uh, feature where they might need another infrastructure to be created or or certain things needs to be done all those things will only be uh, you will be able to do if at all you are maintaining your build now what are the things that you need to look at when you are talking about maintaining your build infrastructure the first thing that you need to look at is pipeline health now what do we mean by pipeline health is the first thing is that you should recognize flaky tests now what are flaky tests flaky tests are certain tests which are kind of those tests we you know there are certain tests in infrastructure in your build we sometimes they pass sometimes they may fail uh, because of suppose you have a test to check a api okay during your build definition itself now that api is not a highly available solution right so it might be possible that particular api sometime is available sometime that api is not available and when it is not available and if at all that time your build is running and running that api test that api test will be failing and that way your tests are failing in the build de definition this is one example so sometime that api test will fail and then you will be thinking that okay my builds are failing and then all of the sudden when you, if you are running it again in the next one minute uh, api is up and running in the background and your tests are passing so those types of tests are called flaky test and you should recognize such flaky test which are making your pipeline you know uh, health uh, you know the, which are impacting your pipeline health so you know uh, 70% of the time it was passed 70 you know 30% it failed and then in those 30% 20% of the time it was because of one particular test which is very unpredictable in nature uh, sometimes it passes sometimes it fails because of certain dependency so you need to recognize those dependencies and you need you need to either take out those dependency or you need to automate that test in a way that it should not remain flaky you know for for the longer time you need to monitor the pipeline execution right so to to recognize the flaky test you can only recognize that uh, you know flaky test only if you are monitoring the pipeline how much time it is taking uh, if it is normal to run this build for 30 minutes is it is it something i need to take care is it like you know uh, is it is it some task in the build pipeline which is unnecessarily taking 5 minutes of your time which might be removed or which might be replaced by a a a, a different task which can be finished within less time you know 1 minute or something so you know if you will monitor your pipeline you will evaluate uh, even though builds are passing but how much time it is taking how many tests are passing how many tests are failing are, are there any flaky tests if they are flaky then can we fix it how can we fix it those kind of you know uh, decision those kind of understanding you need to understand and then only you will be able to kind of improve your pipeline health over period of time the next thing is analyze failure rate 
we have already discussed about you know the monitoring pipeline so monitoring pipeline will end up giving you a data where you can see that okay these are the things which are happening uh, and the good thing about azure pipelines uh, in, in general uh, if you look at the tooling point of view azure pipeline does expose a lot of data and then it gives further integration with power bi which is an uh, one of the analytic solutions from microsoft and then you can actually analyze that data uh, you know using those dashboard kind of solutions which can give you more insight about your pipelines or you know or or anything that you are doing in your azure devops uh, that how things are going and if at all you can improve those things including pipelines so if pipelines are taking too much time if you are using so much hosted agent time can you replace it with the uh, you know with the private agent uh, can it be uh, done in a better way can can you uh, upgrade your hosted agent or private agent can you do it with 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 better task management on all those things you you will be able to analyze if you will if you are monitoring your pipeline and then you are making use of that data that is coming from the monitoring point of view now once you have these data once you are able to understand your pipeline health uh, based on the flaky test based on your monitoring pipeline based on your analysis that you have done either from the pipe azure devops pipeline interface itself and or if at all you have so much data if your you know team is uh, you know really using so many builds then you if at all you are integrating with azure uh, uh, other systems like power bi then you will be getting a lot of information about improvement and there are certain things that you might want to take which can improve your pipeline <coughs> you know pipeline infrastructure in the uh, in the organization and the first thing that can improve the pipeline infrastructure is pipeline templates now what exactly the pipeline templates are when you are working in azure devops i mean azure pipelines for uh, to be specific then there are two options that you can do uh, one is when you you can build your pipeline using a graphical user interface that is similar if you are coming from a uh, azure background then it is very much similar to your azure portal you go there you look at the things you click on it you create that infrastructure no coding knowledge is required nothing is required you just do it but as you may know if you are coming from azure in you know background or any other cloud background then it is very difficult to automate that way of operations you cannot really automate uh, if at all you are you know doing things entirely with you know with the portal the and then comes the things which are called you know in terms of cloud it is called infrastructure as code similarly in in the uh, pipeline world in the build def, you know build tools today there there are concept called pipeline as code where these pipeline applications build applications like azure pipelines jenkins or you know github actions gives you a way to write your pipeline as a code uh, and to be very specific uh, you know azure pipelines gives you a way to write your uh, pipeline as a yaml file y a m l y a yaml file and that way you can you can manage your pipeline as a code now when you manage your pipeline as a code that definitely increase the reusability aspect of your pipeline because when you are uh, you know using a code to do certain things definitely you can share that particular code to other person and with minimal changes they can reuse the same template or the same thing into their infrastructure to improve it further microsoft uh, you know this azure pipelines and other pipeline tools as well they have concept of templates so you can create a template all right and using that template you can actually standardize your uh, what you call uh, build infrastructure or build definitions across uh, organizations so suppose in your organization uh, they they do build a lot of software that are based on asp.net all right so you can build a template which can define all the all the standard task that has to be followed in your organization 
to build a dotnet application and then you can release that particular template in your organization and then later on whenever someone wants to build a in you know a build pipeline or a pipeline they don't really have to work from the scratch they will just pick that template and then start using it and you know run the build and that way they it will be sure enough that you are using the company standard or the organization standard task so tomorrow if your build pipeline is passing but deployment team is saying that okay this is not ensuring this particular task has run during the build because it is failing on this you know this particular component is not there so for example in your organization it is a standard task that you are going to restore your nuget uh, project i mean nuget packages or you are supposed to replace the connection string in your asp.net application and if at all you have not taken care of it then later on you know your release team can come across and they will say okay your build definition is not a standard one you do not have a abc task that is a standard task in our organization so to escape i mean to to actually save you from there pipeline templates will help you and in azure pipelines or other software i mean other other ecosystem you have a concept where you can you know develop a template and you can release it in your organization and they can further use it to kind of uh, you know kind of uh, implement a standard process to develop the pipeline the second thing which is very uh, you know similar to that you know but but it is kind of uh, very important where you know you can have common variables and task group so if at all uh, you know uh, there are templates to standardize standardize the complete build definition but there can be you know there there might be scenarios where you might not want to standardize the whole template but you want to reuse certain variables like you might want to name you might want to have a naming convention for artifacts you might want to have a naming convention or a, a, a particular security string for a particular things which are which are happening in the build definition you might want to have a you know a particular type of uh, certain setting that needs to be set during the build definition all those things standard information standard variables you can define as a group variable which is available in in the in the in the uh, azure devops and then you know people can start using those variables without having without exposing the values those variables you know having so for example you might not you might have a database string that you want to everyone use during their build process that has to be replaced during the deployment uh, pipeline which is a, a shared instance of database and or whatever now that value you want you don't want to um, kind of uh, share you just want to tell them that okay this is the value that you need to this is the you know, variable that you want to use and then automatically it will be taken care from a global variable group where from where it will be you know exported and then that will be used so that kind of implementation you can do with the common variable task or the group variable task group variable and then there is something called task group you 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 know similar to pipeline templates you know in pipeline templates what you have is that entire pipeline you are standardizing so in pipeline suppose you know you are having a pipeline okay and you are standardizing the whole pipeline now in some cases you might have it might happen that you do not want to standardize the whole thing you just want to standardize this these two things all right these two tasks task one and task 2 so in azure pipelines there is a way to kind of create a group of this task 1 task 2 and you can call it task group 1 or something and then in a next pipeline suppose where you want to use this task 1 and task 2 instead of using task 1 and task 2 you will just use task group 1 1 task group one and automatically it will use these two tasks and it will automatically do the work and then other things you can do so you might not want to use the entire pipeline but you want to use a certain task 
collection of task from one of the pipeline for that you can use task group and that is how you can kind of standardize you can kind of improve your uh, reusability aspect you can improve sorry the, you can improve the uh, the pipelines uh, in your infrastructure from the reusability point of view from the standardizing point of view uh, and all those things now the next thing which is build time which is a very important aspect when you analyze your builds all right let me when you in standardize your build when you look at the builds and when uh, when certain types of builds are happening again and again your build infrastructure which is having your compute maybe your private agent that is a virtual machine in azure and you might want to save some time there right so suppose you have a task like task 1 okay task 1 is taking like 5 minutes and then task 2 is taking like 1 minute okay and then task 3 is taking like another 15 minutes i'm just giving an example in total you have like 15 5 20 21 21, 21 minutes 21 minutes of build now if you are looking at data then you might understood that okay task 3 is taking too much time it should not take 15 minutes there must be something i can do about it and then based on that you might want to reduce it from 21 to maybe maybe 18 minutes or maybe uh, 10 minutes based on the need right you can only look at it when you and then the moment you will reduce it it will automatically save your few minutes from the build infrastructure and if at all this build is happening on a azure vm okay if it, if it is happening on azure vm and the amount of time you are saving it is a save for your cost as well so that way it is not only a standardizing your build but it also saves your cost from the build infrastructure point of view most of the you know infra, you know organizations these days will be you know executing their build on a cloud infrastructure and cloud is like you know on demand kind of thing right so as and when you need it you spin it and you use it and then you destroy it the amount of time you are using it you are paying for that and if at all you are able to reduce that time then you are optimizing your code at the same time you are reducing the cost for running that build and that is why when you are looking at the improvement or your pipeline you should look at the build time another is pipeline code we have already discussed that you know pipeline templates are the way to use and then to use the pipeline templates you have to look at the pipeline as a code concept where you can use yaml app, you know yaml file to define your pipeline and that is the way you can implement your pipeline or uh, you can improve your pipeline now <clears throat> when you look at your pipeline maintenance the another aspect that you should be looking at is build agent capacity now when you look at build agent capacity uh, we have already discussed that to run a build you need you know you can define your build definition all right your you have a build definition which runs certain task task 1 task 2 task 3 task 4 task 5 now all these things will be executed on some server some vm it can be a hosted vm which is um, you know azure uh, vm uh, hosted agent means a free vm from microsoft for 1800 minutes for private project unlimited from uh, from the uh, for the open source project now this vm is something we called as a build agent now if at all this build agent is your host you know is a private agent which is your on prem vm private on prem it can be on prem or it can be in your own azure cloud virtual network so if it if it is a virtual private vm then you need to look at the compute and memory of this vm because your build are going to run on this particular virtual machine and if at all you have spin up a, a small size vm and then your build requires a little bit larger size of vm like you know more cpu more memory then your build will start either failing or it may not finish in a expected time so to either and then uh, vice versa as well so suppose you have deployed a quite a you, you know a bulk vm in terms of size like you know uh, 16 cpu uh, 16 virtual cpu and then uh, suppose 32 gb ram or something like that and if at all you are just using it to running a build which is going to uh, utilize just one cpu or less than one cpu one vcpu and and uh, less than 1 gb ram or 2 gb ram 
then all of those are extra uh, resources that are available with your build agent are waste and you are paying for it. So from both from the cost point of view, from the optimization, optimization point of view, you should look at build agent capacity. The first thing. Second thing you will be looking at is runtime and other dependencies. So since you are managing this VM, all right, you are managing this VM. You are kind of running your build on this. Now suppose you are running a build which requires a particular PowerShell module on the build agent. So suppose as part of your build, you are running a PowerShell command to to yeah, kind of doing certain things during your build definition. Now that command will be executed on this VM. Now as you know, if you are running a PowerShell command and, and if it is a custom PowerShell, I mean a, 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 a PowerShell command commandlet from a particular module, for example, SQL Server, for example, Azure. If at all that is a that is coming from a specific module, then you have to get installed that module in advance here. Then only that particular command will run as a part of your build definition. Other, you know, apart from that also, suppose you are running an application which needs PowerShell uh, .NET Core uh, to run the build. Now .NET Core is not the standard uh, version that comes with the, uh, you know, uh, some some operating system like uh, Ubuntu uh, runtime and all. Or maybe on Windows as well. So on certain versions, you don't have you have a uh, standard uh, .NET .NET framework, uh, full full .NET framework, but Core is not available by default. So you might have to install those dependencies, install those runtimes, if at all your build needs. So you need to look at those aspects if at all you are setting up your build, uh, you know, capacity, uh, you know, uh, your build uh, agent. Then both from the compute and memory point of view, both from the app and also from the application in installed application installed runtime uh, point of view now the third thing which is very important is parallel jobs now what is parallel jobs is that since you are using yeah since you are using this one vm suppose and it is linked to azure pipelines right so this is your azure pipelines now in azure pipelines in azure pipelines you might be having different different build definitions like build build 1 build 2 and then suppose there is another build three. These are three different different build definitions being used by different different teams. This is .NET team. This is Java team. This is another .NET team. Now it might be happening that while B1 team, okay, while they are running their build definition on this on this particular app server uh, build server, another team which is b2 might be also a initiating a build uh, you know build or maybe another team which is b3 is also initiating a build now in this case this is what we call parallel job so in the, the, this particular vm should be capable enough to run parallel jobs parallel builds at its time if at all that is required if these teams can wait for some time to b1 to finish that's fine but in organization you you know you you might want to save their time and for that you might want to have a parallel job concept there where this particular vm can take up multiple jobs at a time to run from different different build definition and for that parallel jobs you have to pay in azure pipelines so azure pipelines comes with one parallel job okay more than one parallel job you have to pay for it so that kind of capacity that kind of dependency you need to look at if at all you are using your build definition on scale if you have a large team if you have a different different team who are going to access the same agent same build agent for running their build then you have to look at how you can reuse the same build agent using parallel jobs instead of spinning up another vm so if you do not have the parallel job then what you will do you will run another vm now in that case suppose this is something costing you some uh suppose eight dollar per hour just an example similarly you will be costing eight dollar per hour another one so you might not want to go into the extra thing you might want to run a parallel job on the same vm because you think it is a you know a eight uh, vcpu uh, and uh, suppose 32 GB RAM, just an example. Uh, then this build is just using some 0.5 CPU and uh, 1 GB RAM. 
so that way you know that from the capacity point of view they all can run it's just that you need to enable parallel for that you need to uh, look at the configuration of the software that you are using in case of azure pipelines this is a paid option that you have to go through <coughs> No, that sick and the the third thing which is uh, the fourth thing which is the last thing is agent access so when you are setting up your agent you might not want access to uh, ex give access to everyone to run their build against it so suppose uh, you have your organization and as we have discussed with azure pipelines you get 1800 or uh, 1800 minutes of free uh, build pipeline uh, for your organization and you might want to run those free minutes for small teams for development teams for those teams who are just uh, running some uh, dev test kind of or some poc kind of projects in those cases you might not want to give them the paid infrastructure that you have for your private agent in that case you need to control that agent access so that you can kind of control uh, you know uh, no uh, so that when someone is using the paid infrastructure uh, you know that you are already you are already consuming the free options that you have from the microsoft so that aspect you need to make sure so that uh, you are optimizing the build capacity the build agent capacity at the same time you are making use of all those free features op uh, in a very optimized way no having all these maintenance options you know uh, uh, aspect of it then you comes to the point where you want your organizations to look at uh, you know all the builds in a very standard way and we have already discussed one of these options uh, using a pipeline as a code option the, you know we are going to revisit the same thing here as well that is you know using build agent in cloud so when you are uh, you know using the build agent in cloud the benefit that you have is that the first thing is that cloud gives you on demand infrastructure so as soon as you are starting your build you are able to spin up the virtual machine and you are able to use that virtual machine as a as a as a build agent and then you can destroy that virtual machine so that kind of automation you can make use of it then also when you are using cloud for your build agent it is going to give you various options in terms of you know customization or in terms of you know capacity and at the same time it is going to save your infrastructure cost as well because when you are setting up a build infrastructure on prem you are going to have a capital investment you know you have to buy a server you have to buy a uh, you know set up the virtualized platform and you have to do all those things but if you are running a you know server in cloud and if you are making that particular server as a build agent then you just need to configure that build agent you know uh, as soon as you spin up the vm and you are only paying till the time you are running the vm the moment you are stopping that vm you are not paying for it you are just uh, you are just bidding, uh, getting charged for the time you are using it that way your your capital investment uh, which is major uh, majorly driving factor for many customer to go to the cloud will be helpful to implement your build uh, infrastructure in your organization the next thing is infrastructure as code or pipeline as a code is going to help you uh, when you are using infrastructure as code to set up your build environment then you it is a reusable thing right so if you are setting up your build agent using arm template using terraform then as long as you need that particular build agent you can spin it up and then the moment you you don't need it your builds are not running right now you don't think in this coming month you are going to run a build on this particular server you destroy that server then again next month you need that particular server you spin it spin it up using your uh, already developed code that is infrastructure as code and then that way your build agent template i mean build agent will be reusable at the same time cost will be saved a lot the next thing which is coming into picture these days is containerized environment so a lot of people are going from vm world to the containerized environment and which is true for you know build agent environment i mean build agent ecosystem as well so you have a build agent in infrastructure right you can build the, you can kind of build your application 
using a container approach and that way it again reduces your cost and reduces your maintenance aspect because of course you know when you are building a container using some uh, docker file and all you can reuse it again and again you can destroy the container when you don't need it then reuse the same container and that way of uh, lightweight infrastructure as well as reusable infrastructure all those features that are coming as a part of container will be helpful in your build agent infrastructure as well and that is how you can be you can you know run your build infrastructure on scale at the same time saving the cost you don't really have to pay a lot when you are running because build is one of the thing to automate and if you are using automation to automate things right so it is like you know double automation so you can do that if you are using these aspect of your build agent if you are running your build agent on a on premises hyper v or you know or some uh, on premises system then you might not be able to automate the deployment part of it and that way you will always use those build agent always running there there might be scenarios where no builds are scheduled on that build agent for entire day all right still they are running and that way you are you are you know uh, you are actually uh, kind of losing those those resources in waste something like that as we have said using any one of the approach where you are using build agent in cloud infrastructure as code containerized build agent then you will be able to generate you know kind of spin up your build agent on demand whenever your build is running your build agent will be you know uh, start and the moment your builds are completed your build agent will stop and you are not paying anything uh, uh, after that so you are just paying for 10 minutes 20 minutes 30 minutes 50 minutes 60 minutes whatever the time your build is running and then after that your agents are stopped you don't really have to pay for it but you have to use these build agent templates using these concept where you are using infrastructure as code we are using containerized build you are using uh, you know cloud to deploy your build agent all these things will help you to uh, kind of uh, maintain a infrastructure of build agent which is highly uh, you know uh, optimized in, from the cost point of view as well as maintenance point of view now the next thing is reusable component this is again the same thing that we are discussing here is pipeline as yaml so if you are running your pipeline as a yaml you will be able to uh, share that same pipeline across organization to use it again do not really have to go through the scratch uh, go from the scratch you can develop that uh, you know you can build the application if at all your application does have the same kind of application stack same kind of dependency and everything you can standardize that particular yaml into a pad template and then you can give it to them then so that you know it can be a standard template for an organization that these are the tasks for asp.net application these are the tasks for a dot uh, a java application these are the tasks for deploying infrastructure in azure these are the tasks for deploying infrastructure in uh, gcp these are the tasks for deploying infrastructure in aws so any kind of standard things you can do using pipeline templates the next thing is variable groups you can create variable groups you can create a global variables Go, you can tell them that whenever you need this where you know this value you can use this variable name and then automatically you will get that value in your pipeline without exposing that value they will be able to use that value across organization that way globally everyone is using the same value i mean same thing uh, for a certain type of task there might be scenarios where you want to whenever you are running a suppose uh, mm, uh, uh performance testing uh, you might want to run a particular uh, server with a security information and in uh, you know we, uh, you know with a security setting that should be coming from a global variable so all those things will be possible if you are using variable groups and then similar to variable groups we have this task groups task groups are similar we have already discussed that if at all you don't want to standardize the complete template you can standardize certain tasks task 1 task 2 and then combine them together into a task group and then in your organization people can use those task group uh, uh, you know uh, uh, to to kind of implement the collection of that task uh, without having to implement the task 1 task 2 again and again and that way reusability will be there the last thing which is there is 
you know marketplace extensions so they are you know uh, the beauty of azure devops or azure pipeline is that it is extendable and it is extendable up to the mark where you can you know use lot of marketplace extensions which are developed by various third party people and individual contributors which can extend your extend your azure devops to the third party ecosystem like jenkins octopus jfrog name it you have it so you know majority of devops ecosystem tool set they uh, you know if microsoft is not giving the inbuilt uh, integration then marketplace extension is a place where you can search and 90% of the time you will be able to get something which can help you to integrate azure devops or azure pipelines with that particular ecosystem those you know popular ecosystem and there are a lot of them and if you are making use of those marketplace extensions you don't really have to develop your own uh, custom approach to solve certain things so suppose uh, microsoft is not giving you a way to do certain things with sql server do certain things with azure or do certain things with gcp do certain things with aws which are outside of microsoft ecosystem and the the you know the feature is not available marketplace you can search and then probably you will be able to get some something out there which can help you to kind of reuse the things which has been developed by certain other people and microsoft azure devops also gives you a way to develop your custom extensions as well so suppose you have a need where you want to kind of uh, uh, you know uh, implement a custom logic in your organization and you don't really want to share with publicly you know you you don't want to really uh, publish it on a public marketplace extension because this is very much uh, you know uh, something which is uh, intellectual property for your organization or maybe it is very much specific to your organization need and you you might not have that particular so you can develop your custom extension with uh, that is uh, that is having the custom logic to do certain things in your organization and you can privately release it within organization within company and you do not really have to publish it to the marketplace but suppose there is another good feature about this particular custom extension is that just like other people have published it in the marketplace if at all tomorrow you think that this particular custom extension does not have any intellectual bounding and your company is ready to share this particular thing with the with the community where you know suppose you have done some custom work where you are doing certain pipeline things or certain automation with one type of uh, cloud platform or one type of platform like you know uh, jenkin or maybe you are doing something with azure or you might be doing something with one service in azure power bi or something and you think that releasing it with the uh, community will be a a, a great cause uh, because you know you have developed something and it is really useful for people because a lot of people are doing that particular task but they have to develop their custom way or they might have to look into work around so that way you can publish your custom extension as a marketplace extension publicly as well so both options are there you can you know either use a, a publicly uh, released extension from someone else you can develop your own custom extension and privately use it and you can develop your custom extension and publicly release it and then let people also use it so these th you know these things makes azure pipelines uh, a really reusable friendly tool and similar kind of approaches are available in other tool sets and that particular aspect you should be looking at whenever you are developing your build pipeline whenever you are maintaining your pipeline you should always look at all these things so that you uh, in a longer term you are able to improve the pipeline and you are able to reuse the components that are being used in pipeline and you are able to improve the performance of your pipeline and you are able to reduce the cost that is going into the pipeline infrastructure over period all using all these best practices using all these <laughs> things in picture now with this thing we are going into uh, a 10 minutes break all right after 10 minutes break we are coming back and in that after break uh, nitanshu will be 
you know share you know uh, going to have a demo for this particular thing where he will be setting up continuous integration in Azure pipelines and there he will be creating a basic build pipeline using a template in Azure DevOps. There he will be helping you to go through the interface. How do you track your pipeline? How, what are the various important, uh, you know, uh, uh, interface uh, uh, or various important points that you can look at during reviewing or troubleshooting your of your pipeline run? And then he will be uh, setting up a continuous integration build where he will be triggering the build using changes into the uh, code and then automatically running the build based on that those changes. So we'll be doing this demo uh, after the break. So let's take a 10 minutes break. We'll be coming back with a demo. After demo, we will be having the quiz. Uh, we will be also announcing the winner of the last quiz uh, where we will be, you know, having a lottery system. We'll be sharing random name. You will we will be uh, looking in the random name and uh, based on those, uh, you know, the lucky winners, we will be share, sharing free exam vouchers to them. Uh, OK, so let's come back within 10 minutes and then we will continue the session.
All right, so we are back. Uh, Nitanshu, you there? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can go ahead and share your screen and let's start yeah. the session. Yeah. So welcome back, guys. This is Nitanshu. I'll walk you through the demonstration today. So in today's demo, we'll be covering uh, how to create a, a continuous integration pipeline from a, a predefined ASP.NET template. So let's get started. So as you can see in my, on my screen, there is uh, Azure DevOps portal in front of us. So there, you, there I have already created a you know, uh, project. So we have some repositories here. So in this, in those repository, I have I already have one project, which is a basically a .NET project with some .NET code and uh, various things. So what we'll do is we'll just go to the pipeline and we will create a new pipeline from here. We'll click on new pipeline. Then you can see uh, uh, there are very there are various options here with uh, in which you can select your source like where is your code situated. So it can be as your repos git, it can be Bitbucket, GitHub, or some other git as well. So uh, this is for the uh, YAML uh, code. Like if you want to create your pipeline in YAML, but like Ashish told you that you can create a, a pipeline using the classic editor like you can do in Azure. So for this particular demo, we will be using the classic editor. So I'll just click on the classic editor. And there we will select Azure repos git. Yeah, there also we have other options as well like TVFC, GitHub, etc. And I'll just select my project, right, which is my project, my repository, it's parts unlimited, and we'll be using the master branch to read the build. So I'll just click on continue. And here you can see that I have uh, several options here. So if I if I if I want to use any predefined template, I can select it from here. So no, that's the that's you can say that that's the beauty of Azure that. Uh, that you can have the pre uh, the templates here so that you don't have to work uh, from scratch. So you can uh, just select the template and just you and you can just carry on your work and uh, get going as soon as possible. So we'll just click on apply. And there you can see we have uh, several options like so this template various have uh, see, this template basically works on six stages. So the first stage is this is a uh, new uh, get so new get is basically for some uh, dependency packages that that this code might need so this uh, the, the new get store handles that uh, package dependencies and then the stage comes uh, which is called the build solution so build solution is basically the main task that uh, you know builds the solution that uh, and merges the code with the existing code and then the last one is the test as uh, uh, next one is the test assemblies. So with, we, in which we have some uh, several uh, tests that uh, that got performed on the code. And then the last one is the publish artifact. So as soon as all of these previous stages get successfully completed, so one artifact gets uh, published in the, the Azure uh, uh, this uh, artifact stage. Then here you can see on the top we have several options here. So the first one is the variables. So variables are basically the general variables are the common variables that you might need during the deployment of this build. So as uh, so it, maybe if you want to change like as he told in his demo in, in his uh, you know when he was talking about these uh, variables like you can also you know just in case you want to change your uh, connection string while uh, you know creating the build so then you can use these kind of uh, variables to you know store your connection string and get going and you don't, don't have to hard code anything in that case then the third part is the triggers so this is the uh, part where you know we uh, where the automation comes in place. So these are the triggers that we use when we want to automate our CI uh, pipeline. So we have three options here. You can see one 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 is this here. If you can see this should scheduled. Second one is build completion. Third one is enable uh, uh, this this one. 
uh, the option where uh, we are enabling the trigger so when when uh, so so, uh, so uh, nitanshu yeah. uh, let me pitch in here so can you just yeah. go ahead and enable uh, click on the enable uh, continuous integration yeah yeah so as you can see as soon as nitanshu is enabling the continuous integration it pops up where you can select various filters one of the filter is branch filter where it's saying that whenever there will be a change in master branch associated with this build Okay, so you, when if you remember when Tanshu was starting the you know creating the definition, he was selecting a repository. So in that repository, you can select a particular branch or you can select multiple branches. So here we are going to select only master branch. So whenever there will be any change in master branch, there will be a build trigger automatically. So you need not to go to the system and uh, you know start the build. It will automatically start the build as soon as you will change anything in master branch and we'll be showing it in the later part of the demo where you will be making some changes and it will automatically trigger the build. Uh, similarly, not only branches, you can do the path filters as well. Now, when you create a path filter, you create a, a build for changes in a particular folder. So that is something we are not going to create right now but that is the one option that you have and now if you look at the left hand side of the system uh, on this page there you have scheduled and build completion so as we have discussed scheduled is something uh, you might want to run a nightly build you might want to run a, a build at a particular time uh, in, or a particular uh, time in the day or in a particular time in the night when when no one is there systems are idle things can run without having to impact anything so that's something you can do similarly you have a build completion thing where you can click on uh, you know wh where you can uh, create a uh, you know uh, a, a, a kind of connection where anything that happens on the other build system then only this build will be triggered so this kind of trigger system is available you know you can make use of these complex combination to kind of automate the build trigger uh, in your environment as and when things are changing be based on path based on schedule based on branch and all uh, yeah nitanshu please carry forward <clears throat> Yeah, so the next uh, uh, the next app that we will hover over to is the options tab. So here you will see we have uh, various build properties like the naming convention for the build. You can see that build number format. So in this format, the build will be the, the naming convention of the build. Then uh, uh, you can see there are three options enabled, paused and disabled. So as soon as you create a new build, so the, by default, uh, what you can select what you want to do with that build, like uh, if you want, ju just want to, uh, if you want that as soon as my build is created, it's got in the enable state. So like uh, as soon as the you save the build, it, it will go into the run mode and create a build as soon as the agent is available. And if you want to uh, do like, uh, like as soon as you create the build, you want, you don't want to run it, but you want it in a pause state. So you can do that as well. And and here you can uh, see that uh, build in, in the build job properties, you can select the timings that if a build is creating a too much time, how much how much time, how much time in minutes that you want to give it to so that it can complete or if it doesn't get completed, the it, it can cancel the job or timeout occurs. Then on the uh, next option, we have some retention. So what you can do is retention basically is for that how many till how many days you want to so like you uh, created a build and you run it and how for how many days you want to store it like in the history of the like like you can for for activity log purposes like so how many days you want to keep it like so days to keep artifact symbol and attachment so here it by default value is 30 so it will keep it for 30 days and after that if they got uh, deleted automatically so in the history right now there is nothing because we are creating it anew but you can uh, track the changes into the this tab by going to this tab so we'll just click on save and queue here and we'll select all the default option agent in the agent pool we'll select azure pipelines and on the branch we'll select the uh, master branch and we'll just click and this agent specification is basically the agent version like Ashish was telling about on the virtual machine that this build will run onto. So this is the specification of that agent. So we'll just click on save and run.
and this is a hosted agent. So Nitanshu has not really created a virtual machine or anything. Uh, this particular agent which is coming to you with the configured, uh, you know, Visual Studio and the proper Windows operating system is coming from Microsoft and Microsoft is giving you a certain amount of minutes for your private, app, you know, project and for public project. It is like, you know, unlimited for private project. You have 1800 of minute you know entire month you can run it and uh, for each build it will be 30 minutes so every build if it is less than 30 minutes and uh, you, you can run it and as you can see currently build is running and on this interface you can see which repository is running uh, you know which particular repository uh, is uh, is actually connected to this build uh, which branch has triggered this build all right uh, what is the status right now and if nitanshu will click on this agent job uh, nitanshu can you click on this agent job yeah. thing yeah so he will be able to see the entire thing what is happening which task is running which task is right now running which is completed which is failing which is passing if it is failing due to what error it is failing so azure pipelines gives you a lot of verbose information there where you can see if at all something is not going correctly if at all things are going correctly then what what are the things are being run uh, so that over period you can optimize this particular process and as you can see the, the this is showing you how much time it is taking right till now it is one minute few seconds and then total how much time it is taking and since it is a time that you are getting from microsoft and free is limited also it is on on your server as well on our private on your private build server as well it is a time that you are consuming so you might want to optimize this timing using this interface you will be able to figure out what are the things are there and how you can optimize this particular thing okay i think it is finished now let's go yeah now yeah let me show you would you yeah, like to so talk? yeah so we'll, so you see that uh, uh, the agent job got successes, so we got a build created from this. But this is the actual the manual process to do this, like creating a new pipe pipeline, and as soon as we created on save and run, it got run. So now we'll see how to. And, and one more thing here, uh, yeah. you know, before going back to the uh, running it automatically, you can see this after finishing the pipeline. Uh, you can see this. There is a one published artifact, and if you click on this Nitanshu, one published artifact. Uh, you know the on the release. Yes, this one. Yeah, yeah. Click on that release. Publish it. Yeah. Published artifact. Back. Uh, go back on the main page. Go back on the main page. Yeah. They are. If you click on this one published uh, uh, artifact, just adjust adjacent to the timing. Yeah, one previous. Yeah, so you see this. What is the thing that has been published? And this is the artifact that has been generated after the build. And this is what we call normally artifact. Now, this is your artifact after successful build. And what is recommended, you should not make any changes in any of the file over here XML, .NET, Java, whatever it is. If at all, due to any reason, you are required to make any changes over here. You are recommended to incorporate that particular process into the build pipeline itself so that whatever the changes you have to do it after this, you you will do this as a part of build itself. So this is the artifact that we are normally calling during, you know, during our DevOps pipeline. We call that, you know, after build pipeline, you get artifact and this is what this artifact is. Now let's yeah, uh, Nitanshu. You can, yeah. You can. So uh, now let's automate that the pipeline that we have just created. So as you know, while creating the creating while while we were creating the pipeline, so we saw uh, we selected the branch there. So that that branch and Ashish told us that as soon as uh, we we we, check, we created a checkbox there and selected the master branch. So so with, with that what does that means is as soon as we create a make a change in master branch, that the pipeline will get invoked. So we'll just go and just uh, try to make a change in our master branch. So we'll just uh, go into the code and we'll just select this page and we will just uh, make, uh, make a you know cosmetic change in in here. So and I have made a changes and as soon as I'll 
uh, click on commit and it this commit got get gets completed so so this commit got completed and we'll just go back to the pipeline so there you can see that this build got automatically created and this pipeline was invoked and here we can see it is currently in the running mode so just like we created uh, when we, when we did it manually so uh, now it is in on to the same same stage into the running mode and we'll just click on agent job so there we can see a lot of obros information like on which stage it is currently right now so eventually this build will also get succeeded and so ashish that's it for i think today's demo yep so this is how you can see this uh, how nitanshu has uh, you know created a build pipeline quickly using a template that is there in your azure devops uh, there are a couple of uh, you know template that has already been provided by microsoft so you don't really have to think you know if at all you are using one of the popular stack like dotnet java or node or python then microsoft has already published those templates in there you can quickly start using those template to build a general pipeline you can start you know configuring it with your custom uh, changes or the custom uh, needs but you can start it and then you know we have shown that it is very much customizable you can go there and you can you can look at the uh, the interface you can trigger the build based on schedule you can trigger the build based on path you can trigger the build based on uh, you know um, branches and as well as you can trigger the build based on another build completion so these are the things you can configure and then later on you can configure the retention period you can look at the history what are the things there and then we saw that uh, in the current screen uh, you can you can track the whole thing what exactly happening in each task on the build agent and in our case the build agent is a hosted agent by microsoft so we don't really have the remote access to the server we cannot do the rdp or ssh but at the same time we can see what is happening over there and if at all something is failing it gives you a really nice interface where you can see okay you know these are the commands which are failing maybe i need to look at the code maybe i may need to look at the packages that i am using maybe i am not using the correct package maybe i need a different agent or maybe i need a, i need to install a runtime before i trigger my build or all those things are possible using that interface and this is the way you can quickly start it is free for first five users it's free 1800 minutes is free as you can see for a standard .NET application it took less than two minutes i mean less than 1.5 minutes as well and uh, so that way 1800 minutes is a quite reasonable minute that is being provided by microsoft to you free of cost and you can use it even for private project and for public project suppose you are running a public project you are running an open source project it is entirely free so you don't really have a 1800 minutes uh, limitation over there so having said that this is what we had for today now let's start the quiz for today uh, we let me share my screen so nitanshu i'm going to share my screen yeah okay so let me share my screen again to start the quiz okay just share all right so this is the this is the quiz url that you are supposed to visit azureeasy.com slash az400 uh this is the url or you can scan the qr code it will also redirect to your browser to the to the quiz for today make sure you are you know answering all the questions and putting your email id and username i mean your name there we will be using that information uh, in case you win the voucher uh, let me post the same url in chat as well and ashish uh, this link will be active for 10 minutes only for all the participant 
So yes. they all have to uh, complete this quiz. So within 10 minutes from now. Yes, thanks uh, we've been for. Uh, yeah, so we will be tracking uh, within. Uh, you know, we will be kind of disabling this link after 10 minutes. So make sure you you uh, answer the quiz all the questions within 10 minutes time. So I have posted the URL in the chat as well. If at all you are finding difficult to. Open the link from the browser by typing or from the scan your code. OK, so let me at the same time. So. We are. Having the URL on the screen, if at all you are not able to open, please go ahead and scan the QR code and at the same time we are tracking the time, so make sure you are able to finish the quiz within 10 minutes. OK. So 10 minutes you have in the meanwhile, I am also opening the quiz Q&A. Uh, if at all you have some questions, please post there. Uh, we will try to answer all the questions. Uh, just in case we are not able to answer the questions uh, due to time limits, uh, we request you to join our Telegram group and post the questions over there. Uh, we definitely answer there uh, after session. Uh, we all are part of the Telegram group. We not only, you know, uh, you can find the sessions details on the Telegram group. If you are there in the Telegram group, uh, you will also find, you know, useful information. Uh, you know, uh, you can you can connect with Flow community members. And let me just post the group link over the chat. Uh, you can we also discuss various things about DevOps and Azure in general, so you can you can discuss issues, your real time issues, your day to day issues that you are facing in the infrastructure and you you know you can connect with the experts or you can know know the learning path and all those kind of basic as well as expert level information that you may not be able to figure out due to proper connect you know networking or community so we have a very good community of expert people in the group and we really you know discuss so many things over there so i highly recommend everyone to join there if you are not part of the group yet we continuously share all the information uh, related to our uh, you know community over there
So I can see that many people are responding to quizzes and uh, this uh, quiz link is about to expire now. OK, yeah, uh, Vipin, can we extend it for two minutes? Actually, in the chat, uh, I mm -hmm. have added a uh, extra dash in the uh, dash in the link. So because of which it it has created uh, confusion for few. So let me correct okay. that one. We'll be waiting for two more. Yeah, minutes. we'll be extending it for next two minutes. Uh, you know, so okay. just uh, by mistake added that. Extra. Okay, just let me correct that one. Okay, so I have corrected the URL, guys, and I am also I have also posted the correct link in the chat as well. Due to one dash additional dash, it was. But we are going to extend it. Uh, sorry for those who are not able to access it, but the QR code should be working fine. There was one, you know, link that we have mentioned in the chat, which was incorrect. Most many participants uh, use this QR code. I can see that uh, yes, lot yes. of people have uh, attempted for we... this particular quest. Uh, yeah, and I can see that uh, almost uh, all the participant uh, is trying for this particular quest. Yes. So one more minute to go. So this quiz link is uh, uh, dis disabled right now, and I appreciate all the participants who attempted for this quiz. Uh, Ashish, now it's over to you. Uh, you can uh, announce the winner for the last quiz and uh, carry on. OK, so let me let me share my screen. Just give me a moment. OK. We are going to open the link and we are going to open a lottery system where we'll be giving the uh, you know free uh, vouchers to those people who have uh, kind of attended the previous session and did the training uh, did the uh, you know the the quiz like today's just give me a moment. I'm sharing my screen a bit uh, with the with the participant information. So. Okay. OK, so. As you can see, we are going to have a shuffle from a list of name that we had in previous session. 
So as you can see, we have 35 entries based on the people uh, who you know were part of our previous session and they also registered on event right page. So when you are taking the session and when you are participating in the quiz, just make sure that you are also registered on our event right page that we have uh, for so that you can also get the free, uh, you know, the future session updates. We are planning new training tracks as well. You will be getting all those updates as well if you are registered there. So let me go ahead and run the first winner uh, wheel and let's see who is the lucky winner. So from the lucky winner, we have this Radeep. And I'm going to re save this information in our database. We'll be connecting with Pradeep uh, after the session and we'll be sharing the Azure voucher with him. Now let's run this wheel again. And let's see who is the next winner. So this is this email ID. Let me just check the name. Okay. As per our database, control C. So the name of the person is Devraj. We'll be connecting with Devraj after session for giving him the voucher. So let me remove him from the list. And then we are again running the wheel. The third winner is Email ID with Deepak. Let me save it. And fourth winner is Lohit. Congratulations. So we are going to save his name. Now run it again. Oops. What happened? Okay, so this is now a vow. So Narsima, you are again winner of this quiz. So this is total five. The last winner will be. Let's see. And we have this. Last winner. Okay. So this is it for the winner. Congratulations and those who have. You know, participated in today's session. They will be, uh, you know, they will be selected in the next session. In the next session, we will be having a similar, uh, you know, lottery system where we will be, uh, you know, selecting those people who have participated in today's uh, session, and then we will be selecting a few to give the vouchers based on the availability of vouchers, and. Uh, uh, thank you so much for joining the today's session and uh, just as a final. Let me share my screen. So this is our group information and this is our speaker information. Uh, Nitanshu, you can reach out to Nitanshu on this LinkedIn URL. And if at all you want to connect with me, you can reach out to me on my LinkedIn URL. Uh, you can also uh, visit my blog. 
azuredevospro.com to see all the sessions as well as all the information about our group. You can register for the future sessions on this URL, azureeasy.com slash az400, uh, az-400. There you will be uh, uh, getting an uh, event right page. Uh, if you are registered for sessions there, uh, you will be getting all the updates about the session as well as uh, the recording session details and you will be eligible for the vouchers if you will participate in the quiz uh, in, in respective session. Uh, you can also join our Azure talk group, which is a telegram based largest Azure community. Uh, we have more than 8000 people over there. A uh, lot of expert, lot of beginners, so whatever query you may have related to Azure uh, in terms of learning, in terms of your career path, in terms of your real time issues that you're facing when you're implementing certain services in Azure. You can, you know, ask those questions over there. Uh, community members, including the core team members uh, behind the scene uh, who are working behind the scene for this session, are available there to help you to answer those questions. Uh, we try to help each other to grow their learning in Azure. Uh, you will be uh, getting updates regarding sessions. You will be getting updates regarding the uh, recording, uh, you know, uh, locations, slide deck and all. In addition to that, you can connect with us there in real time. You can message uh, to all the community member. More than 8,000 8, people are there to help you. Similarly, we have Azure DevOps Pro group on the Telegram application itself. It is again a group where you can talk anything and everything about DevOps and Azure. So it is a group where you can discuss anything that you may have issues or you may want to discuss about DevOps or you may want to discuss about Azure implementation of DevOps. So we have like more than, you know, approximately 2,500 people and we are growing very fast. And there you can, you can, uh, you know, there are experts, there are beginners. So all types of questions are welcomed. Everyone can help you there and we all help each other to learn more and grow together in this particular technology. We have our YouTube channel. There you can search Azure Talk. There you can find all our previous session recordings as well as all the recordings that we are going to, you know, all the sessions recording that we are going to have, including the current session, will be hosted on this channel. So you can go there and subscribe to the channel uh, to get all the latest update from our channel as well. So this is a quick information or quick detail about us. Uh, you, you know, thank you so much for joining our session today. Uh, do join us in future session where we will be discussing about other modules, other topics that are part of AG400 uh, exam. After completing the entire session with every module, uh, you know, you can go ahead and do self learning based on the materials that we will be providing as part of this recording session as well as some uh, learning material from uh, freely available learning material and then you can plan your exam and of course in each session we are giving away certain vouchers so if you are the lucky winner then you can actually appear for the exam entirely free of cost so with that thank you so much everyone i really th would like to thank everyone behind the scene core team or azure talk community and you everyone who are making us, uh, you know, to enabling us to share all the knowledge or to help us to grow together in this particular ecosystem. Thank you so much. Have a great day. So.